Karen, what is our first main topic today? Notorious Frank writes in and says, hey, John, and happy new year to you and the crew. I remember you talking about cinema... <laughs> Cineworld, excuse me, maybe selling off Regal Cinemas to AMC last month. I just saw that Regal and Cineworld are now saying that they're not looking to sell off pieces of the company, but rather the company as a whole. What do you think about this? And what do you think and who do you think could buy them? All right, Notorious Strength, thanks a lot for sending that in. And yeah, you guys will remember, first of all, uh, as a result of the pandemic, which we are still feeling the effects of, and we said that as the, as the pandemic was starting coming in, I said, listen, we're still going to feel the effects of it for quite a while. Cineworld, the world's second largest theater exhibitor company, only behind AMC, owners of Regal Cinemas as well, went into bankruptcy. And we talked about how AMC theaters approached some of the creditors of Cineworld and Regal to inquire about maybe purchasing Regal off of Cineworld, maybe purchasing a number of the Regal Cinema locations and all that kind of stuff. And it sounded like the negotiations stopped. Well, now more is developing and it looks like Cineworld wants to sell itself whole stock, like lock, stock and barrel. This comes just from the folks over at Variety who write the following. Regal owner Cineworld, the world's second largest movie theater operator, has denied reports that it had been in talks with AMC, the world's largest movie theater group, regarding the sale of its assets. Cineworld added that it intends to sell the group in its entirety rather than break it up. AMC last month said it was no longer in discussions to buy some of the theaters owned by Cineworld following initial talks with some lenders. So you might look like that Cineworld and AMC are saying conflicting things. No, AMC never said they talked with Cineworld. AMC was talking to some of the creditors. And Cineworld just said, yeah, no, they never spoke to us, but they want to sell the group in its entirety. Now, this is really interesting because it brings up a couple of options that are fun. Number one, a lot of people will ask, why doesn't AMC just buy the group outright? Well, the problem with that is I think that would never get by the government. Mm -hmm. I think that would then become a, a major monopoly. You cannot have the number one and the number two merging. I, I think that would be looked at as a monopoly. And I don't think, that, by the way, Canadians, no, we've been living under a theatrical monopoly forever with Cineplex. And that is effed over movie fans forever because Cineplex sucks. Anyway, <laughs> um, so they have, they would have a complete monopoly and be able to, to work things. So AMC is not an option. But with the... What was it called? The the Paramount Laws? Is that what they were called? Yeah. With the striking down a couple of years ago of the laws that prohibited studios from owning movie theaters, it creates some interesting scenarios. Could a Disney step in and buy Cineworld? Could an Amazon that could buy and sell Disney 30 times over, could an Amazon step in and buy Cineworld? Could... A, a Warner Brothers step in and buy Cineworld. These are all become very real possibilities, again, because of the striking down of the Paramount decrees. But the one thing that has always stood in the way, even once the Paramount decrees fell and studios would be allowed to own movie theaters, that I've always told our viewers that say, hey, why does Disney buy a, like AMC or all that kind of stuff? Is this because the studios don't want to be in the movie theater business. Mm -mm. They are more than happy to let those suckers run the theaters and make money for them because they know that running a movie theater is a razor thin margin business. And they know that because they've been taking advantage of the movie theaters for decades to keep those margins real as razor thin as possible. And take them out. They don't want to own movie theaters. They simply don't, but they could. And that's a possibility. Here's the other fun thing. The other fun thing is this. I'm going to go over here. Give me one second here. In a second here, I'm going to want to go to our, to my screen. Uh, Jonathan, not quite yet, but in a second. <clears throat> here we go. Okay, so I'm going to look up Cineworld uh, market cap. All right? Okay, go ahead and bring up a uh, thing. Look at the value of Cineworld's market cap right now. Hmm. $50.6 million. Yeesh. That's not for one location. Wow. The stock is three and a half cents. And by the way, the stock today started at nine cents. Ooh. Earlier this morning, the stock was at nine cents. To right now, a few hours later, it is three cents. In 2019, 
It was $10. Imagine sitting on Cineworld stock at $10 a share to have it go down to three cents. This is movie pass kind of stuff. So I bring up this not to bash on say, look, they, they've had some struggles. They're doing the best they can. This, the, the pandemic affected a lot of industries, few as hard as the movie theater going industry. But I bring this up simply to point out that at a market cap valuation of $50, $50 million. Wow, that's rough. And I'm sure any purchase would have to be more than that. But it means that there are a lot of players on the table who could potentially now with the 50.6 what taking over the company you're also assuming any debts and liabilities so yes it's a much larger financial commitment absolutely it is but it is much easier to co contemplate buying a sin world today than it was a year ago hell it's three times easier to think about buying them right now than it was three hours ago and who knows i might be buying it three hours from now depending <laughs> on how far down that stock goes i mean we'll see so, Rob, let me ask you this. Could you see a scenario here? Because, look, there's a lot of money we still have to put on the table, not as much as a little while ago, but a lot of money would still have to be put on the table, all that kind of stuff. Could you see a player like an Amazon who has been tipping their hand the last year or two, showing they do they want to double down on getting involved in entertainment, they've shown a commitment to theatrical, all that kind of stuff, an Amazon, a Disney, a Paramount, a HBO, Universal. I mean, could you see a player like that? Or could, could you see maybe a, a slightly more healthy cinema chain, maybe one of the number three, number four, number five cinema chains acquiring it? I don't know. What do you see happening here? Dude, it's rough, man. I look at that and that's brutal. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, HelloFresh. Guys, you know, me and my wife, Anne, are both working professionals, and so sometimes coordinating dinner time can be a real pain. But with HelloFresh, it makes dinner time fun, easy, and nutritious. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip those trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Now, guys, we've all got New Year's resolutions and New Year's goals, and HelloFresh is here to help you achieve them. Skip the grocery store and take control of your time and budget with delicious recipes delivered right to your door. With HelloFresh, you get fast and fresh recipes. HelloFresh's latest line of meals featuring robust flavors and filling portions are ready in less than 15 minutes. Enjoy taste and quality done quick with recipes like falafel power bowls, seared steak and potatoes with Bernays sauce, or Southwest pork and bean burritos. So guys, Guys, go to HelloFresh.com slash Campia21 and use the promo code Campia21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash Campia21 and use the promo code Campia21. Um, here's the thing. Right now, we have seen in the last month, we've seen something very interesting happening in the entertainment business. You had, well, actually, the last six months, you had high-profile creators making movies like Amsterdam, Babylon, Steven Spielberg making The Fable, The Fablemans. Uh, these movies aren't making money. James Cameron rolls along, and he's got Avatar that's making all the money, but it takes him four and a half years to make one of those movies. And they've been talking about the danger in the exhibition business that people are only going in to see spectacles, but there's only so many spectacles to go around. The studios, how many hundred million or $200 million movies can you make a year? And the problem is that the exhibition business is in the dire straits that it's in because there's just not enough movies that people are going to see to keep them. You know, you've got either Smile or Avatar 2. That's what people are going to see. All these other movies are not, the, 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 the theaters are dying on the vine, man. They're only as good as the product they have to show. So I think, unfortunately, as long as, I mean, Cineworld is Regal's parent company. Yes, at 50 million bucks? Shit, man, if I had the money, I'd buy it right now. But I, I, I just think that we're in, a, we're in a place where we're still post-pandemic. I could see an Amazon coming along to do this, but why would they? Where's the profit going to come from? Until we see that the business itself that is supplying the theaters is healthier and there's more product out there well and 2020 you and i've talked about this 2023 hey it's a looks to be a, a much better crop of films coming this year Agreed. and much more films than say last yeah. year and, and and we'll see i think that right now it's this business is in a terrible 
exhibitions in a terrible place. But like we pointed out, going to uh, uh, CinemaCon, and there's a lot of great stuff coming out next year, a lot of great movies that is, I think is going to sustain the exhibition business if the exhibition business can get – well, we're already in the new year. But even now, what we've got – you've got – Megan opening, but you have to wait another month for Quantum Mania to come out. Hopefully, that's Avatar. traditional, though, right? Yeah, I mean, that's true. In the but, January months, that's, that's but at kind least of they have like three or four movies they dump in theaters. It'd be, it's going to be interesting to see how Megan performs. Right. Actually, like, can it do? I mean, I don't think we should expect it to do smile numbers, but can it do barbarian numbers? Can it do? Can it like have some traction success for a film? The I type mean, that it is. You know, Taylor is the the horror guy. He goes on yeah. to see. He likes it. You know, and I would say that. If horror movies are good, you watch the trailer for that Megan movie. I mean, I'm like, oh, I got to see that. Like, they've done a great job marketing that movie. And they've got, you know, they've got girls at, at dressed as Megan at sporting sport events. Games, and all. Yep. I think I think Megan's going to be kind of a viral hit. And I hope it is because I want to see exhibition continue. Aaron, you see, like, a, a company like that, the valuations continue to drop. They want to sell the company off as a whole. I mean, you're saying you might want to wait to see how things recover. But once you do, the price of that's going to go up. Like, go way up. Like it is, now is the time to buy. If you're looking to buy a theater, Oof. can you see somebody sweeping in and picking up Cineworld at this point? Magic Johnson. Imagine I mean, Johnson could do it. He he his his theaters are not uh, his, they're owned by AMC now. He doesn't actually own them anymore. He has the experience and he's got the money. So Magic, come save Regal for us. Uh, no, it, I mean, yes, I can see an Amazon coming in and buying this. And yeah, maybe maybe it's a bad investment. What is $50 million to them? Not really a lot of money. Let's face it, $50 million is a lot of money to any normal sane person, but $50 million is not a lot of money for what you're going to get with this if you have a game plan of being able to move it forward. If you have a way of, you know, if you have a creative way of bringing people back into the theater. And I think that that's what it's going to take is it's going to take somebody that goes okay how can we reinvent the theater experience because um you know you look at going to see a movie at um the um not the pantages what's Arc the place the, no the on disney uh on hollywood el capitan the el capitan that is an experience Experience. You go see a Disney movie, and you are not just going to see a movie. You're seeing the show before. You're you're you get it, numb legs because getting numb legs because your knees are, are in your chin. But you suffer through <laughs> those miniature doll seats because of the experience. And you actually um, sit on armrests. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Exactly. Um, so I, I think that for for a company that wants to reinvent the multiplex experience, this could be an incredible an, uh, an incredible ad, an investment. However, if you're just looking to buy it and keep it the same old same old as every other movie theater, then no, like it, it's not worth the money because you're because Robert's right. There's just not the product that's bringing people in. Um, that that being said, every year. Things are changing. So this could either be a really dumb investment, i.e. Twitter, or this could be an incredible opportunity for some really forward thinking, creative people with a lot of cash on hand to uh, reinvent the multiplex experience for the movie going viewer. I'll tell you what, if Amazon were to come out and say, I, I don't care if it's uh, what's, what's the name of the guy who owns Amazon again or Jeff you know, Bezos, Jeff. It's Jeff. Yeah. Whether it's Jeff or Elon or whoever comes out and says, we're or, or like whatever, and says, we're going to buy Cineworld. And here's what we're going to do. Now, first thing we're going to do, no commercials. We're going to do what Arclight used to do, three trailers max. We're going to say every movie theater is a dine-in experience. We're mm, going yeah. to put in buttons on every seat. We are going to do everything we can do to enhance the moviegoers' experience at the movies. Yeah. We're going to do everything we can do, and we're going to invest a lot of money. We know it's going to take us five, six, seven years to see that back, blah, blah, blah. I will tell you what, I will start going to that place. If I got to choose my own seats, if they had really good food that I had to, like you said, you know, uh, if, if I had the Alamo Draft House experience in a Regal Theater, absolutely. If I got to have the reclining seats, if I knew that there would be people kicking out someone who's texting and talking on their phone. Yes. Yes. You know, John, can I get an advance on my next paycheck so I can become a majority shareholder in Cineworld at that price? Do I pay you enough that an advance on your next 
at that price, price? At that at price, three cents? Yeah. Robert yes, Redford sir. Has Robert, if you, have, Robert, 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 if you have $100. Do- ATM right now and take it out, we can all become. If you have $100 in your pocket, you could probably become you a minority. Are now the majority shareholder. I mean, like, the show. Today, I'm, I'm not John lying. Campion I'm going to buy some, because why not? Like, we, Why don't we all pull our money and we can, this whole show can By the way, the what's majority. the name of the CEO of Cineworld? It's like, it's, oh, it's a straight, it's like Marmaduke or something. Look that up. It's like. I hope it's Marmaduke. I really do. Let it be Marmaduke. No, it's like, it's, it's, it's like some kind, just look it up. It's kind Okay. Some, what, what is it? Oh, no, it's even worse. Oh, what is it? I remember something like that, right? I can say this. Mookie. Yeah, Mookie. That's Grin- right. Oh. Grenadier. Yeah, so Mookie. Oh, I love you know, him. I we love bumped Mookie. into Mookie at Cineworld. Oh, Mookie, He's, yes. he, or at CinemaCon. He's going to be at CinemaCon. Mookie, come on up to us. We've got the... Uh, anyway, guys, question is for you. <laughs> Who do you think is going to end up owning Cineworld and Regal Cinemas and all that kind of stuff? Do you have an extra 20 bucks laying in your couch where you can become the major <laughs> shareholder of the world right now? What kind of house are you in? <laughs> it is. Jump on down to the comments section below. checking your, your, your couch now when he becomes over Everybody's for the couch. Can't be a streaming. Clean up. And let us know your thoughts.